What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a new video. I don't have much going on as far as tanker work and this and that. So um, I thought today I would do a truck tour video. I've had a couple of requests to show the truck. So that's what you're going to get today in lieu of any kind of proper <laughs> tankered video. Uh, just want to have a little disclaimer though. I'm not trying to show off. I'm not saying, oh, look at me, look what I got. But people wanted to see the inside, the outside, or whatever, so that's what we're gonna do. Meanwhile, I'm jamming to Rush. A little limelight. I'll probably get a copyright strike for that. The limelight, the universe. So, anyway, you want a truck tour? You got one. Let's get started. Starting with the outside. I haven't done any modifications or customizations or anything. I think the rawhide package comes with that chrome visor, the chrome stacks, the chrome stack covers, probably those rims or wheels, because uh, those you don't really see that on Max. The tires I have are 11R 24.5s, and you see behind the fuel tank is my polar pack that's for doing air offs and pump offs for tanker work and behind the sleeper is my hose rack. The wheelbase on this truck is 250 inches and the one thing about the paint I know it's just white but it's sort of like a muted white or an off-white it's not that really bright fleet truck white <laughs> I don't know what to call it but you know fleet trucks it's just a really bright white and mine's not that which I like. Looking under the hood, we have the Mac MP8 505 horsepower engine with a M Drive 12 speed automated transmission. You can listen to it now. And we have disc brakes up front, drum brakes in the back. Something that just crossed my mind I talked about negative guy, you know, these negative people that no matter what you say, they have a negative response to you. Well, whenever I tell people that I drive a Mac, what do you think negative guy's response is? Without fail, it's, you know, a Mac ain't nothing but a Volvo with the engine painted red. I'm so sick of hearing that, that I want to, like, get rid of the truck just so I don't have to hear negative guys say a Mac ain't nothing but a Volvo with the engine painted red. Anyway, I forgot to mention that turbo is supposedly really fancy. And let's begin the truck tour on the inside from the driver's seat pretty basic i mean it's a mac and they designed their dashes and interiors to be very basic as you can see i mean no frills at all you know at least i have power windows and power locks um and here's my little cluster of switches and gauges you have your wipers heated mirrors mirror tilt um, Jake brake and then the second row is cruise control your off uh, ATC automatic traction your hill start and your sleeper fan and if anybody can tell me what these two do I'd love to know one's a battery and one's a key and then your bottom row is just your uh, diff lock PTO fifth wheel slide and suspension dump AC, radio, and transmission is pretty self-explanatory. Now, the one cool thing, I guess, is the Rawhide logo in the seats and the two-tone seats. I do have the button tuck headliner and a little bit of storage up top. And those are my light switches. Okay, now let's take a look at the sleeper. Okay, so looking at the sleeper, I mean, here's my bed. I tried to get the sheets to match the interior. Um, over here is just the missing drawer <laughs> and my brand new refrigerator. You have your stand-up closet. Oh, I don't know what you call it, to hang up clothes and my laundry bag to put my dirty drawers in. Now there's no cabinets, so everything has to be exposed in these trucks. So my hard hat, my vacuum, all my cleaning supplies, there's no 
cabinets, you know, with doors. But whatever. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, it's pretty nice in that it's got the button tuck on the back with the Rawhide logo. Even the headliner is all button tuck. And then there's all my clothes, my drawers, and my socks and everything like that. Who cares? Not very interesting. I mean, it does look nice, I guess. This type, this type of interior, when you just kind of pan around, it does look nice. Uh, so here's the control panel just for the HVAC and the sleeper. And then there's a bunk heater, a Webasto bunk heater right there to keep me warm at night. This little fridge is great though. Matter of fact, I'm gonna drink my Propel. So that's about it for the exterior and interior. So what's my overall impression? I guess this truck would be fine as a local delivery truck or maybe even regional where you're not spending more than one night in a row in it. It's really not made for um, over the road though. As far as the Mac, the Macness of it, I wrote down all the repairs. I bought this truck, I got it in March. It's now the end of December, so it's been 10 months. This is all the repairs I've already had done to it. Front differential reseal and new fluid. Replace upper carrier side plate on the front differential. Replace the turn signal stalk, the thing that you use to turn the lights. Both drive shafts are replaced, the long one and the small one in between the two um, axles. New particulate matter sensor, twice it went out. New output seal on the transmission, new PTO seal and O-ring, new oil lines between the oil cooler and the oil filter housing, new transmission oil and new transmission filter, new clutch actuator, page two, front tandem axle brake job, uh, got a new air compressor, uh, rear axle new flange seals, new timing gear cover and O-ring, new gaskets on the rocker box cover and the new valve cover. All of that in 10 months, and it's still going. By the way, so far it's been $38,000 in repairs, and that tab is still running because I have to bring the truck to the shop. The bell housing for the transmission has a hole and a crack in it, and the clutch is leaking air. The whole transmission's gotta come out. That will start at $5,000 and go up from there. Plus I have the a rear brake relay valve that needs to be replaced i mean so in a 12 i still have two months to go for one year i'll be easily probably close to forty five thousand dollars in repairs how many owner operators do close to fifty thousand dollars a year in repairs other than me i'm the only schmuck that <laughs> right all right so for those of you leaving me now, thanks for watching. And for those of you sticking around for story time, let's do story time. Man, y'all see this? These lane shifts, this construction area, it reminds me of a story. When I moved out west, I started driving doubles. I was hauling fuel and I'd drive doubles. And my setup looked like this. So this whole setup was about 100 feet long. Truck, the lead trailer, and the one in the back is called a pup. All right, well, I used to go through Utah a lot on I-15 and they were doing this multi-year long uh, construction project, not dissimilar from the one you're looking at right now. And I'd go through with these doubles and you had these narrow lanes, but here's the problem. My old nemesis, UDOT, they go and find the drunkest fool in town to paint the stripes. You know, like the white, you see the solid white line and the dotted white line? You see this little shift here? <laughs> um, well, this guy went and painted zigzags for the lane shifts. See, like this lane shift that's coming up, it kind of goes to the right, and then you drive straight, and then it goes back to the left. Well, not this old drunk. He would, like, do zigzags whoa boss man <laughs> a little close you see that so imagine doing what I just went through in a set of doubles I'd go through there white knuckle because what happens is when you do a zigzag the truck goes left right left well when the truck's going right and back left the pup is not following it anymore right the pup doesn't know what to do 
And so I'd look in my mirror and there's my pup tires on the white line. And then sometimes you'd get the four-wheeler who was terrified and he'd start crowding you and coming into your lane. So then to compensate, I got an inch over. And next thing you know, my pup tires are like crossing the white line. It was horrible. I can't believe, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it took a lot of metal to drive through there all the time. M-E-T-T-L-E, -T -T -E, not M-E-T-A-L. And I don't know, it's just, I guess you dot would go drag this guy out the bar room at five o'clock in the morning, like, come on, man, we need you to go paint some more stripes and lines. And he would have this crazy, actually, I don't, I don't think the bars are open 24 hours a day in Utah, but whatever, you get what I'm saying. Not only that, I'm telling you, this guy's brain was a little mushad. You see the white dotted line in the middle? He would paint them crooked. What is that, a three foot line, four foot line? And it would look like, a, I'm like, you can't even paint that straight, <laughs> much less the lane shift. Oh man, it was bad. It was really bad. But we got through it. I can't believe there wasn't more accidents going through there, especially with all those doubles. But I don't know. Don't get me started on UDOT. Actually, I'm going to probably do another story time one day. It's really UDOT's plow guys and the, I don't know what you call it, the snow abatement department. I'll have a story about them for you another time. But we've covered it enough for today.